So at 27, it's the end of a career, or is it? Uh, it's, it is for, for one part of my life, and uh, 27 is just the beginning in some ways, and I'm looking forward to taking what figure skating has given me in Canada and, and made me who I am to explore other adventures in, in the world and in my life. And, uh, the, the sport of figure skating has evolved very quickly um, and it almost helped in the decision to retire and move on and uh, it made, made sense and it made it clear for me. You use that expression a lot, what figure skating's given me. Mm -hmm. What has it given you? Growing up uh, being completely immersed in figure skating and, and the dream to become a world champion or Olympic medalist has made me sacrifice other parts of my life uh, that most people or most adolescents would experience. Finishing high school with all your friends and having a very close relationship with uh, my high school friends um, and then moving on to university and, not, and having a life in university. That whole experience ha uh, never happened and never will. Uh, so I've had to rely on figure skating to help me become uh, the person that I am, the environment that figure, figure skating created helped me grow up and nur nurtured me to become, uh, I think, the person that I am today. And I have to say, it, it's been a wonderful experience and it's given me a lot of, especially in these last few years um, leading up to the last Olympic Games, uh, has given me a lot of insight on uh, my life and my, myself, um, learning to uh, listen to myself and be a little more aware um, of my uh, of myself and my surroundings. Who is that person, Patrick? Um, you know, people tend to put labels on things. He's three times a world champion. He's ten times a national champion. He changed figure skating. But who are you? Um, I'm just a kid. I'm just a, a kid, or a, I guess I shouldn't say a kid, but an adult, an adult that's a kid at heart and um, a Canadian, a proud, proud Canadian that's uh, been so lucky to have had so much success in skating, yet I've stayed very true to where I'm from and I love my country, I love Canada. I've, I've been waiting for the day to come home and um, feel, feel the Canadian pride and feel um, and, and just start my life here in Canada. Um, people were important to you along the way. I mean, you've, you've trained with and been coached by mm -hmm. some legendary figures. You know, you think about Ellen Burka mm -hmm. um, and uh, Kurt Browning's been a part of your career. But the first was this Osborne Colson. And what did he mean to you? Mr. Coulson was, uh, played a very crucial role in my life and it's easy to forget as I've uh, gone on with my life and my career in skating and it's been many years past since uh, he's left. But his mark on my career and, and me and, and the role he played it was, is I can never forget. And um, just looking back now and that, now that I'm at the end of this career, I can just admire the vision and the visionary that he was and uh, it, almost looking back at it I remember these little hints that he would say or my think little comments my parents would say about about him that reminded me that he always kind of knew that something great was going to happen and uh, and I was going to flourish one day but he never told me and was always very quiet about it um, I think he created a lot of balance between love and care and and seeing the best in me, yet holding me accountable uh, by not letting me get anything the easy way, always having to push myself to my limits. And he had his way of doing things and it played a huge role in my career. Um, you talked about expectations and the burden of expectations. And for a generation, you know, for a decade mm -hmm. uh, or more, you've sort of carried the weight of those expectations. I remember you uh, winning that first Canadian championship uh, and the joy that was there. I mean, the big smile on your face and uh, it was palpable. And yet there were times when there was frustration mm -hmm. that was evident. Mm -hmm. Did you feel that? Did you feel that range of emotions throughout your career? Yeah, uh, even up to the end. 
uh, if not more so at the end of my career and leading up into 2018, it was the most challenging time. Um, when you've had the highs and the lows in your career, it becomes challenging because winning 10 national titles and representing Canada, becoming a well-known ambassador of your country, you can't help but feel responsible to perform at the highest level, bringing the best result at all times. But people tend to forget we're human and we're not robots. We'll always have days where things aren't clicking right and there's mistakes and, uh, and yet there's days that it comes so easy. And that's part of being an athlete and that's part of being human, uh, it's part of, part of the road to success is the, the, the lows and the highs. Three Olympic medals, three world championships, eight major international titles, 10 Canadian championships. Those are just numbers. Yeah. What was the greatest joy for you? With all the challenges I had this year, leading up to Pyeongchang and um, setting myself two simple goals was to win my 10th title. Well, they're not simple goals, but winning my 10th title and then moving on to the Olympics and giving it my best shot for the team to win gold. And getting off the ice after a disappointing show program in the team event and getting off the ice after the long program, knowing that I, I, all I had to do was beat Kolyada from Russia and sitting in that kiss and cry with two coaches, two of my favorite coaches, Ravi and Oleg, and the rest of my Canadian team behind me and seeing my scores come up and seeing that I did my part in solidifying the Olympic gold medal for the team. That was the best, ex the best feeling and, and it, better than winning my first world championship on my own, sitting in that kiss and cry. Um, because I knew that I, I was this close to not playing my part in the team event and seeing the joy that I brought to my teammates that, and seeing them just have that pure ecstasy of winning and, and knowing that we've done it is, uh, is something I'll cherish. And there was an interesting moment uh, long after the, uh, uh, the programs were over in Pyeongchang and uh, you were presented with a letter from your parents where they said they were proud of you. Yeah. The road my parents have taken with me and, and the sacrifice they've had to make to get me here. Every amateur athlete, every athlete uh, will understand the amount of sacrifice it takes to get your child to realize their dreams. Um, and, and I still don't really understand until maybe one day become a father. To have my parents standing by me since day one through, like I said, the ups and the lows, um, when I moved, out, moved away and left my parents and um, without much of an explanation and went off on my own path, they were still there at the end of the day at the Olympics, at my last Olympics, smiling with a bigger smile than ever um, and so proud of who I've become, most importantly, and what I've been able to achieve um, in a sport that I um, dedicated my life to. You know, there's always a talk about a, a, an athlete mm -hmm and legacy. When people think of you, and you know, many millions of Canadians do, what should they think of? I want Canadians, most importantly, to remember me as a product of what this country has nurtured. The type of people we are, the athletes that we've created, and who we represent when we're away co competing internationally. It's, uh, there's a sense of pride when, when we all step out there as Canadians and walking through the opening ceremonies and the closing ceremonies with the entire Canadian team with the maple leaf on our back. There's just something different about it and I've traveled the world and seen different cultures and there's just nothing like home and and I just want people to know that it's thanks to them that I've been able to do what I love and give it my all yet feel comfortable and happy doing what I love. And um, despite the pressures, despite the expectations that may come with all the accolades I've, I've gotten, uh, I've never felt like I didn't want to do it or I didn't have support. It was 
everlasting and it still is. I still feel it to this day, even beyond my, uh, my competitive career. So what will your contribution be? I hope that I can inspire younger generations, specifically in Canada, not just in skating, but in sports. I think we've, too long have we sat on the sidelines um, watching other people achieve the very best. And uh, we've, we've always been very polite and gracious about competition and, and, and striving to be the best one there. Uh, we've always kind of bowed away. But I, I really want Canadians to find the hunger and the drive, yet stay humble and, um, and keep the humility we have as Canadians. And I don't know how and I don't know when, but I know that one day I, I will want to give back and, and inspire younger generations to become the best that they can be. Thank you. Thanks.